Lyle wrote to Scrope, telling of his plan to free the science of geology from Moses. His plan was to rewrite history in terms of his uniformity principle. No causes whatever have from the earliest time to which we can look back to the present ever acted but those now acting, and they have never acted with different degrees of energy to which they now exert. So, armed with this so-called principle, and the claim that sediment is and always has been laid down at three millimetres each century, he managed to argue into existence a huge pile of sediments which it must have taken 600 million years to accumulate. That story, told in his three-volume Principles of Geology, was accepted by a ready audience delighted to reject Moses' account and to accept the Bible as totally unreliable. Lyle's millions of years are still at the heart of geology today. But in 1981, Luis Alvarez and his son Walter shocked the world. They gave evidence that the Earth has been struck by a meteorite so large that it left evidence over the whole face of the globe. The experts got together and calculated that this meteorite could not have been smaller than 10 kilometres in diameter. Thomas Ahrens and Dugan O'Keefe, top experts in meteorite impacts from California Institute of Technology, calculated what this would have done to the Earth. The impact would have released much more energy than all of the world's nuclear weapons put together. The meteorite would have evaporated, and it would have evaporated ten times its own mass of the Earth as well. It would have thrown thousands of millions of tons of water into the atmosphere. It would have evaporated thousands of millions of tons of water, which would condense and come down as rain. It would have caused an earthquake a million times stronger than any earthquake in recorded history. They also noted that from the transient cavity, a tidal wave three miles high would envelop the entire Earth in 27 hours. To do that, it had to be moving at about 750 kilometres an hour. NASA published an artist's impression of that wave. It gives some idea of the height of the wave, but absolutely no idea of the enormous power of so many billions of tons of water moving at the speed of a jet aircraft. It reminds me of Amos 5 verse 8. He calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the face of the earth. Arons and O'Keefe presented these findings to the 13th Lunar and Planetary Science Conference in 1982. There was a report on the conference in Astronomy of June that year. The question was raised, how was it possible that any land-dwelling creature could have survived? That question remained unanswered, and the secular scientific establishment wants to forget that it was ever asked. Instead, they talk about so much dust being thrown into the atmosphere that it must have cut off the sun's light, so all the plants shriveled up and the animals died of starvation. The possibility that they drowned is anathema and must not be mentioned again. That vast amount of water pouring down, and the enormous waves enveloping the entire earth in 27 hours, with such power that whole ranges of mountains could have been washed away, would completely wipe out Lyle's millions of years. But for uniformitarian geology, the story gets worse. A whole lot worse. Evidence has become overwhelming that the Earth has been hit by a body of 200 kilometres in diameter. As NASA's new artist impression shows, it totally overshadows the one Ahrens and O'Keefe did their calculations on.
It makes the survival of any land-dwelling creature an astounding miracle. I've not seen an attempt by NASA to represent the wave a 200 kilometer diameter body would have raised. It makes even the survival of Noah's Ark a miracle, and it reminds me of Psalm 91, verse 11. He shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands. The angels must have put in a lot of care to make sure the ark stayed afloat. But all this is speculation based on some fairly convincing evidence. The Bible tells us that all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, but it does not tell us what caused them to break up. So, although evidence for a huge impact seems strong, it remains speculation, even though it looks like very reasonable speculation. There's actually evidence that a great swarm of meteorites crashed through the solar system. Not long after the fountains of the Great Deep were broken up, several meteorites of more than a kilometre in diameter struck several places around the world. An interesting point about all the fountains of the Great Deep being broken up is that it gives us a very good indication of when the flood happened. Let's look into that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.